Hey, I'm Jack Roberts with Overdrive and CCJ Magazines, and we've got a little treat for our readers this morning, presenting Lisa Kelly, Ice Road Trucker. It's 25 degrees here on the second day of spring in Kentuckyana, and uh, pretty much suntan weather for you, right, Lisa? No, it's warmer at home. We're going to take a little spin today in this Volvo VN. We're going to talk about World Trucker, website and app, and uh, find out what's happening with Lisa. So we're on the road with Lisa Kelly in a Volvo VN tractor, cruising through the cold Indiana countryside. And uh, Lisa's here at the Mid-America Truck Show this year. She's talking World Trucker, which is a new website and app that is geared specifically to the trucking industry drivers. Tell us a little about it, Lisa. What, what do you like about it? Why do you think our readers would be interested? Well, the World Trucker app is actually really cool because it's kind of a Facebook for truckers. And I know you're like, why do I need another social network? But it's different in the way that you get to, it's like trucker specific. You get to show your route that you do every day. And then you're like, this is where it's a good place to park. This is a great place to eat. You know, and then, then when another trucker comes in your unknown territory, and it's like, oh, I wonder where I can fit this truck and park. Instead of worrying about where you're going to fit the truck, look on your tips and the other people's routes, and you're like, oh, I can fit a truck park here, it's legal, and then, oh, here's a good place to eat that's nearby, that food's awesome, you don't have to worry about. You know, life, life on the road is hard, and it sounds to me like this is all about helping drivers uh, live a better life, enjoy their life a little better, and, and take things easier when they're away from home for long stretches. Is that the whole idea? It, yeah, too. I mean, it's like a social network, too, with the truckers, because I think it's, there's like a chat app on there, or on the app, that you can, it's only within a certain radius. So then you can be like, hey, does anybody want to hook up and go eat or something? Right. And there will be somebody within your radius. So it kind of draws you together as a family, too, because I know, you know, it's so, you guys go cross country and state to state and you don't really see the same driver twice. But it can kind of bring you in as a family. And you can also take pictures of things, like where you've eaten or your view or your truck, and you can put it out there. It's just fun to, like, go do all the pictures and stuff. It's a lot of cool. Um, so you're back on you're back on the show this year, um, right? Do we need to talk about that? Or what, what can can you give us a heads up on what's going to be happening? Any cool things viewers want to know about? Uh, well, I am going to be on season seven this year, and we just got done filming it about a week ago. So I've just like come from Canada straight to here. Um, it's in Canada, and that's about all I'm allowed to tell. Wow! So they're pretty they're pretty strict with you guys on what you can reveal and what what you can't. Yeah, huh? because what's the fun, right? Right, right. If there's no secrets left, what's the fun? But but I guess the secret is that I'm there and it's in Canada, and and um, I will tell you that this is the funnest season I ever had. Really? Yeah. So I hope the fun that I'm having comes across on the screen because I had a blast. Twist this year? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you surprised at the show's popularity? Um. Yeah. Actually, I am surprised that the show is doing so well. It's like, wow, that's really cool. There's a lot of like, ice road trucker show wannabes. Yeah. You know, like, there's a lot of they follow the format, or it's like, uh, I don't know, highway truckers, right, and right, wagons, and it's all kind of ice road trucker based. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the standard that's set. You know, when I was a kid in the 70s, truckers were the knights of the highway. You had Burt Reynolds and his Trans Am running around the road. And then, right, and then, you know, truckers kind of fell out of favor. Do you get the feeling that we're in sort of a second golden age of truck drivers and, and the popularity of the show has contributed to that? I think the show's definitely contributed to the awareness of truck driving because, you know, truck driver's a truck driver, right? And then pretty soon, you know, that's what moves America and people are realizing it. And, like a lot of people come up to me and like, I didn't even know what you did or that even existed until I saw the show. It's like, oh wow. Hang on, she's gonna do with the lights. Yeah, they're gonna do a turn right there. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, guys. <laughs> So, how long you been driving? How'd you get your start? What was the first truck you drove? Oh gosh, let's see here. Uh, I've been driving almost 10 years now this summer. Yeah. And you're making me feel really old. You wait, you're not old yet. I know, but like when I saw someone I've been driving a truck for 10 years, holy cow, that's a long time. Yeah. What attracted you to it? Um, I think what attracted me to it is that nobody else in my family did it. Yeah. And that I just always kind of liked engines and stuff. Yeah. I 
you race a motocross in high school, and that started from a report I did in English class. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of a series of things. I started taking mechanics classes, and you know, it's just kind of this. I don't know. I'm like, what should I do with life? I don't know. I like old time cars. Yeah. And if I don't like it, I'll do something else. And I just loved it. Wow, that's awesome. So. Um, I have to ask you about your animals because the readers all know about your horses and stuff. What's uh, what's happening there? That's a dangerous question because I'll never shut up. Yeah? I have three cats, one dog, and three horses. And each got their individual distinct amazing story. <laughs> but they're all well and waiting on mommy to come home after being gone for eight weeks, right? Um, the dog is. The cats, I think, kind of care less. Yeah. The cats, well, two of them will, will be excited, but they won't act like it. They'll yeah. be like, oh, you're gone. And the horses will be like, oh crap, we gotta work now. Because they just get doted on my dad. Yeah. Feed them apples and feed them hay all day long. And then I come home and they see me and they're like, oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you about being a woman in trucking. You know, I mentioned Burt Reynolds in the 70s a while ago. And every, every one of those movies, you know, they always made sure to show a woman truck driver because it was different and unusual and kind of strange at the time. Did they? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you, you see them in some of the clips, and now women drivers are a lot more common. Um, do you, you feel like you guys have gained the acceptance you deserve in this industry? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, still some still some barriers out there, maybe. Let me think of an answer. A politically correct answer. No, I had some. I lost it. There's a there's something. The first thing you said. You know, talking about how in the 70s it was unusual, you know. Oh, it, women being more popular. Well, yeah, it, I mean, more common in it now than, than it was back then, for sure. I think, yeah, I think it's way more common. I get a lot of comments like, you know, she's not the only, only woman truck driver. I'm like, well, that's true. I have to give credit to all the women truck drivers out there that do the same thing I do. Do it better or do it the same. You know, I'm not saying I'm the best or anything. I just happen to be the one that's filmed. That's it. Yeah. I'm not taking any kind of credit. It's just would too if you had the chance. Sure. But no, I mean we're all out here working and trying to make a living and everyone might have their own motive. What's uh when you're driving, what's your pet peeve? What really ticks you off? What kind of behavior on the road that you just want to pull someone over and slap them across the face? Everybody's got their stuff that they that, that ticks them off. You know, it used to be a lot more than it is when I've been driving in India and South America and people come out here with their brights on and they pass you three wide and almost nothing faces me anymore. It just depends on how tired I am. But one thing I don't like is when someone's purposely messing with a truck. Right. Like you can tell they'll come around and then they'll get in front of you and then they'll slow down and then they'll get on the shoulder and throw racks on you. And it's just like, what are you doing? Right, right. This is mostly that, like, you know, I'm trying to do my job. I'm trying to get home. Everybody, you know, I'm trying to deliver your freight. Yeah. And get your stuff to your store, you know. And you just When's leave me alone or yeah. yeah. When's when's the last time you got flipped off? You know, it's really weird. I, the last time I remember getting flipped off was a guy on a motorcycle in the other lane like that. Yeah. Like, and I wasn't even doing anything. I'm just driving. So he must have had something against truck drivers in general. What do you think the public, what would you like the public at large to understand about truck drivers? Because there's a lot of misconceptions about the job that drivers do in, in out there in the John Q public. What would you what would your message be to just the country at large? Just that hey, the, like you said, the freight, we're the guys that get you the freight every day. We're just doing our job and we're trying to do the best we can and we spend a lot, a lot of hours on the road and away from our families, which I'm sure people are aware of. And that sometimes we kind of think that we you know are better than the average driver or that we kind of get Right. And we just need to keep up on it, but, you know, we might be blocking the lane or something, but just try to be patient because we're trying to do something with a very large truck that's very heavy. You know, that's the one thing I think people don't realize is how safe the trucks are and how well trained the drivers are. Because there's an image of this dri of drivers as just, just kind of wild men. And uh, I think people would be a lot more relaxed around the trucks if they knew how well trained drivers were and how safe these things are today. Well, they are and they aren't. Just because they're safer doesn't make them safe at all. Because you got, you know, don't ride the blind spot. Like, don't ride next to a trailer and just sit there. Because, you know, what if I have to immediately move over? You know, if you're merging in, I can't just speed up or slow down for you to get in. So kind of match yourself in there. 
Like, we're all trying to, we have to share the road. Nobody owns a road. This road is for everybody. Yeah, no doubt. So no truck doubt. drivers need to realize that and cars need to realize that. Good, let's do one more. Uh, you know, you're a Kenworth girl, we all know that, but uh, what do you think of this Volvo today? Um, I actually haven't driven that many Volvos. Um, I'm representing Volvo right now, and so I've gotten to drive a few. I got to drive a cab over in Sweden, which was awesome. And this is the second Volvo like this I got to drive. The first one I got to drive was the Ford Testing Grounds in Michigan. Yeah. On the racetrack. That was cool. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to them. I don't have a solid answer yet. It's really weird not to shift. Yeah. It's really weird not to have like all these gauges everywhere and all these light buttons, but it's like driving for you. It's really easy to do drive truck. Yeah. Well, let's talk. Let's let's make the final question. This you um, you like a manual transmission? You're not a not you're not sold on automatics, right? I'm not sold on automatics because I don't know. I maybe I'm just I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of behind technologically. Like I just got my first smartphone like a month or two ago. Yeah. So I'm kind of behind that way. But these are great for the highways. It saves you. Obviously, you know my wrist hurts and shifting is very hard on it. But. uh I think there's mostly in the environment that I'm in, yeah. steep hills and ice. I like to run my RPMs where I want to run them. I like shifting and having 18 suites to select exactly where I want to be for exactly what I want it to do. So the manuals are kind of weird, or the automatics are kind of weird to me because they kind of decide when you're going to shift and I might not want to shift right then. <laughs> but there is, the, the cool thing about this particular design on this Volvo is that you can actually put it in manual and choose when you want to shift it. Yeah, so you can right. drive easy or you can do it the old school way. So it's kind of a truck for everybody. Cool. We're good.